Ready to get us started, the Aussie punter and kickoff man, Michael Dixon. And off we go from Seattle. This one fielded at the five. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Now a first carry for Derek Henry. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll fake it. Now Tannehill sliding out of the pocket. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards. So just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And the next-gen stats show him reaching at a top speed of 20 miles an hour. Our game not even two minutes old, but a quick red zone opportunity. First and 10 right at the 20. Out to his left. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. Throwing again here on second down, this time complete. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. That'll give him 60 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Tannehill got a man and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Julio Jones there to make the grab. And the Titans take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide's a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. And this is good. Our score, 7-0 Tennessee. That time, a six-play drive. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. I can hear you. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 27. Off of play action, he'll look to throw. Flushed out right. He'll run it. He finds an opening past the 40. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
He couldn't get the edge there. It wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the running back to go, and especially for offensive linemen trying to get out ahead. With their footwork and speed, it was negligible on that play. No gain at all for the offense. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Looking to throw on second down. Wilson rolling to his left. Now he'll pull it down. Oh, he's got a little daylight. I think it's fair to say there's nothing that gets a crowd to its feet quite like a big play, and that was something special there. Boy, was he moving. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards So just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. So operating from Tennessee territory now, here's first and 10 down at the 31. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. This will be caught just inside the 10. And the Seahawks are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. Wilson. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Wilson connects with Tyler Lockett. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. It's over! It's over! Let's dominate! The Titans offense set to begin the drive, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield. Those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Eluding the pressure right. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds the defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and 10. 54 is mine. 54 is mine. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. Back to throw. Tannehill on the move to his left. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with an eyelash. Dropped at the one. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. And I guess, Charles, sometimes when you have a receiver well over six foot, 
you do that. Just put it up there, let him grab it, and he did. And it certainly appears like a 50-50 ball, right? We always talk about that when both sides have a chance to get it, the receiver or the guy covering him. But I think the odds actually are in favor of the offense. They can see the ball coming oftentimes before the defender can get his head around. So I think that really goes to like 70-30, and they should be able to go up and get it most of the time. And he got it there. Tannehill now to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Julio Jones once again the intended target, but it'll be second and goal. Here's Tannehill. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Julio Jones with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Titans have taken the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Extra point right down the middle. And that makes the score 14-7. to Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Pulls it in at the 13. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences it? And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. It's Jeffrey Simmons that time who got in to record the sack. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. Wilson going to fake the give and keep it himself. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. That's All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. The Seahawks trailing, but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter. Fielded right around the eight. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to, and if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. This is Carson, and this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. From the gun on third down, Wilson. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. From the gun, it's Wilson. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. Give him ten yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. 
They run it with Carson. They find some open field here. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Chris Carson, 26 yards. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. I thought as that was developing that he might actually keep it but the right decision, obviously, to hand the football off. And some teams do a really nice job of taking a little bit longer at the mesh point, meaning where he's going to hand it off or keep it. Sometimes they ride and maybe a step longer than others. That allows him to make the proper decision and have the right person end up with the ball. And it paid off with a long touchdown run. The extra point now coming from Myers. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A drive that time of six plays. And it was all capped off by the Chris Carson touchdown run. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. Oh yeah, that's how we do it. And he is out of bounds here on the return. The Titans offense set to begin the drive, and their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Back now in Seattle, Washington. All square, 14 apiece to score as we get ready for the fourth quarter. Throwing on second and three, Tannehill. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. they able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. It's caught, Jones. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. To throw again on second down, Tannehill. He'll find Jones again, complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 32-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Tannehill throwing again, steps away. It's complete. This is Derrick Henry. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. Second down and five. Now Tannehill. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Tannehill now to throw. And Jones has it over the middle. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. 
Tie game, fourth quarter, and they're going for this thing on fourth down. They snap it to Tannehill. He'll buy some time right. That's complete to his tight end, Ferkser. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as it comes with a minute four left to go in the game. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, Tannehill. And this is going to be intercepted. Trey Flowers picks it, and he'll go down inside the 15 at his own 13-yard line. Well, they thought they were going to break the tie. The defense had other plans. They were already in field goal range, but boom, an interception. I don't know if this was a case of being a little bit too greedy with the opportunity to put points on the board, but give credit to the guys on the defensive side. Hung in there, battled, and made a key play. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they, of course, tie game, would like to avoid overtime if they could. And a lot of people would go ahead and play it safe here and get to overtime and try and win it there. But, you know, sitting up here in the booth. takes some... And this is going to be intercepted. You got Picked you up by Janoris Jenkins. You. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. I get and appreciate that they wanted to go for the win, not play for overtime, but that's the cost right there. Not so sure their fans feel the same way as you when they just watch that ball get picked and taken the other way, and now they're down six. Looks like it's going to be a loss for them, an absolute catastrophe when they tried to be aggressive. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Takes it at the seven. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So Wilson and the Seahawks down 21-14, 47 seconds remaining. How costly of an interception will that be? It's time to find out. First and 10. Back to the air, Wilson after the pick six. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Here's Wilson. Out to his left. He'll try and run it. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. He's going to let it fly. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. And that is going to seal this victory as time runs out. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here. Coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it, and they came up with the interception and sealed their victory.